Well, there are different strands. One is, of course, we have to help uh, Ukraine in the short and uh, I hope not medium term uh, to cope with the costs during the war because it's about to keep the country up and running and to keep uh, business uh, alive and to avoid that uh, in particular uh, international companies are leaving the country. So this is number one. Number two is okay, we have already to think about how to structure a possible future reconstruction of Ukraine and here we have uh, uh, agreed with the Ukrainian uh, authorities, President Zelensky, to lead uh, a joint platform uh, for the reconstruction of, the Europe, of, of Ukraine. Third, of course, we have to support our uh, frontline countries, in particular the ones who are the first recipients of refugees. Uh, this we have already done and we will do it in the future. Uh, and fourthly, of course, we have to see what are the effects uh, uh, because of um, a lack of, uh, for instance, food, uh, <coughs> wheat uh, for countries in Africa and to avoid everything that we are running into a food crisis which might also trigger, for instance, migration to the European Union. And of course, in general, we have to support also our member states to cope with the uh, spike of um, energy prices, which again triggers um, inflation. 50% of the inflation is actually uh, caused by the high energy prices. And here, uh, finally, member states agreed, for instance, that we should now uh, go for a, a joint purchasing of gas, which the European Commission has already uh, proposed in 2001, but it took, unfortunately, 21 years and the war that member states could agree to this, but now I'm confident that we can go into this direction. So it's a set of measures to address the situation. Even without the pandemia, and now the war uh, uh, triggered by Russia in Ukraine, we would have had um, a kind of reflection about the future of the so-called Maastricht criteria, the growth and stability pact. Uh, and uh, uh, now for these two events, uh, we have suspended the uh, application of the Growth and Stability Pact, but of course we will return to it. The question is how <coughs> this um, Growth and Stability Pact should look like in the future. I think some cornerstones are undisputed, for instance the, the 3% um, deficit, structural deficit per year. The question is what is an adequate debt level? And um, uh, one of the big issues is always debt sustainability of a member state. Huh? And therefore, I am in favor of um, um, a stress test, a budgetary stress test of each member state to see what is the situation in a given member state and on basis of this to agree about a, ro a roadmap how to reduce gradually but in a sustainable manner uh, the debt level. Because what we have seen in the current uh, crisis, unfortunately I have to say the, the plural, is that uh, those member states with, uh, which had uh, uh, made, if you like, their homework and have reduced the debt level had much more firepower to address uh, the challenges stemming from the current uh, crisis. And in that respect, uh, I think all member states have learned the lessons. We have to reduce debt levels, but we have to do it in a way which is digestible and um, uh, feasible for each member state.